On January 20th, 2012, over 70 Special Tactics officers armed with assault rifles breached the dot-com mansion in Coatesville, New Zealand, and arrested four internet businessmen for allegedly operating a global criminal organization. Accused of causing $500 million in damages to corporations and collecting hundreds of millions in profits for themselves. One of the men arrested was the leader of the organization, Kim.com, CEO and founder of Mega Upload. Kim.com is a successful entrepreneur who had founded several companies before creating Mega Upload. He got his start in hacking communities in his home country, Germany, and quickly became skilled enough to find security flaws in major corporations around the world. He built a strong reputation and started one of his first companies, Data Protect, where he operated as a security consultant. He was hired by German companies such as Vodafone, Daimler, and the German Stock Exchange. Data Protect quickly grew to around 30 employees and had revenues of several million dollars. Kim worked on other innovating projects including the Megacar, an internet-connected car system that allowed for multi-camera video conferencing. He also proposed a mobile authentication system for banks in the early 2000s as an additional security measure, a concept that was ahead of its time but we now all use it today. Kim was a successful businessman and innovator who had the ability to see financial opportunity in technology. He also built a reputation outside of the business world through his flamboyant personality and excessive lifestyle. Kim was known for racing luxury cars, partying with celebrities, and having photographers follow him, documenting his every move. Kim was not afraid of being in the public eye. One of the exclusive things Kim enjoyed doing was participating in the Gumball 3000 rallies. These were 3,000 mile long rallies aimed at wealthy car enthusiasts, including Kim, who pushed his Mercedes CL3000 to its limits and recorded most of the journey. Kim ran into an issue, however, when he tried sharing these videos to his friends over the internet. The files were too big to send as an email attachment and he had no other method to send them, a problem that would spark the creation of his most successful company, Mega Upload. Him and a few programmers he knew quickly began working to solve the issue by creating a website that would allow users to easily store files and provide them with a way to share them. In March 2005, they launched MegaUpload.com and it was one of the pioneers in the remote storage locker market, what is now referred to as cloud storage. Users could upload any file whether it was music, video, or text just by clicking the giant orange button on the website. The site would then generate a link which a user could copy and send to friends, family, or just share anywhere on the internet. It was a foolproof way of using powerful file sharing technology that had existed for some time prior to the creation of the website. Kim was just one of the first to make a successful business out of it. Despite competitors also entering around the same time, Mega Upload quickly rose to the top file sharing site because it was free, efficient, and most importantly, it was easy to use. At one point, Mega Upload was the 13th most visited website with over 1 billion unique visitors per year, accounting for nearly 4% of the total traffic across the entire internet. The company generated revenue primarily through advertising, so with this amount of traffic, it was earning substantial sums of money. In just a few years, the company was already generating millions in profit each month, and Kim.com made sure the world knew. With the success came controversy, and with the size of Mega Upload and the lifestyle Kim was living, he became a target. Dissatisfaction was growing within the entertainment industry, as cloud storage sites had become mainstream. While the website was mostly being used for legitimate purposes, it also attracted users that would abuse the technology, using it for nefarious activities, such as uploading copyrighted content. One type of content that Mega Upload made significantly easier to share were large video files, including TV shows and movies. File sharing services for music existed for years prior to Mega Upload. However, this was the first time shows and movies were so easily accessible on the internet. Production companies across the world were starting to feel the impact of the new technology, including the biggest of them all, Hollywood and the Motion Picture Association of America. 
The MPAA, which consists of the five major film studios in the United States, did not like the disruptions the new cloud storage websites were causing to their business model. Chairman of the MPAA, Chris Dodd, began seriously pushing the U.S. government to do something about foreign piracy, including his support of the Stop Online Piracy Act proposed in 2011. Since the MPAA was a major lobbying group, they had significant influence over Washington, and Chris Dodd threatened to cut funding if nothing was done about foreign companies hosting copyrighted material. Kim knew he was under pressure, but he was always one step ahead and was prepared to deal with the scrutiny. Yo, what's up? This is Kanye. I like Mega Upload because it's the fastest and safest way to send files. Period. Hey, I'm Alicia Keys, and I use Mega Upload because I know that I can get my music safely and quickly. What's up? It's your man Floyd Money Mayweather. I like Mega Upload because it's fast as hell, but it's not fast as me. When I need to send files for music, movies, television, it's all good. Mega His PR upload. tactics were not enough to fight the forces against him, Hollywood and the United States Department of Justice. The DOJ became involved shortly after the MPAA threatened to cut funding to presidential campaigns, perhaps coincidentally, or as a response. The FBI began building a case against Mega Upload and its executives over the next year. They had to act fast, however, as Mega Upload had plans to go public on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, which would make it more difficult to prosecute. The U.S. government obtained search warrants to seize Mega Upload's domain names and partnered with the New Zealand authorities who then applied for search warrants to raid the dot-com mansion in Coatesville. The raid was planned for Kim's birthday because the United States expected other executives to be staying at the mansion for parties Kim would host. Specially trained officers designed for counter-terrorism purposes flew in on helicopters equipped with body armor, automatic rifles, and attack dogs on the morning of January 20, 2012 to carry out the raid. They seized $67 million worth of Kim's assets, shut down Mega Upload servers, and seized its domains. Aside from Kim, three other executives were arrested, including Chief Marketing Officer Finn Batato, Chief Technology Officer Matthias Ortman, and Software Engineer Bram van der Kolk. They were indicted on five charges, including criminal copyright infringement, racketeering, and money laundering. The U.S. government argued that Mega Upload and its executives not only facilitated criminal copyright infringement for their users, but also encouraged it, and that they should be held criminally responsible for the actions of their users. This concept of third-party infringement is referred to as secondary copyright infringement, and this was the first time it was brought up in a criminal context, as criminal liability for secondary infringement does not exist in United States or New Zealand law. Mega Upload was over, and Kim and his colleagues now had to fight extradition to the United States, where they could face decades in prison. Kim was not giving up and decided to fight the case despite all of his bank accounts being frozen and being up against one of the most powerful opponents. He had a significant advantage, however, which was the corruption and unlawful practices that began to surface in the case shortly after his arrest. The novel nature of this case led to the U.S. government using questionable tactics, similar to how the novel nature of Mega Upload arguably led to the exploitation of obsolete copyright legislation. Aside from the unique business of Mega Upload, this case was legally complicated for the U.S. because Mega Upload, its executives, and the majority of its activities occurred outside the country. It was also based on something that was not a crime in the United States or New Zealand, secondary copyright infringement. Because of these reasons, the U.S. came up with a clever but unlawful way to obtain search warrants and a criminal indictment against Mega Upload. To prove that the company possessed a criminal state of mind, the FBI manipulated Mega Upload to leave certain infringing files on their servers, which would then be used against them in the warrant applications. Yes, so they asked Mega Upload to assist in one of their investigations, and Mega Upload has always been a good corporate citizen, so where we were required, by law to assist, that's what we did. And whenever we assist, obviously, law enforcement doesn't want us to touch those user files because they are part of their investigation, part of their evidence. Uh, and then later on, the FBI used this against us, basically following their standard procedure and claimed that even though we have been notified about something bad, we didn't take it down. And that is, of course, dishonest and uh, unfair. Throughout Mega Upload's history, it actually had a near-perfect track record of removing infringing content and fulfilling all its obligations to prevent illegal activity on the website. It was in full compliance with the Digital Millennium Copyright Act and successfully responded to over 30 million takedown notices in the company's seven-year span. 
It didn't have any legal issues with any company, and even went beyond compliance and offered an abuse tool to 120 companies in the content industry, including Disney, Warner Brothers, and NBC. This tool allowed these companies to paste a link that they thought was infringing, and Mega Upload would instantly delete it without any further verification, something no other cloud storage company was doing, despite receiving takedown notices from the same companies. The US received warrants to shut down the site, however, additional search warrants were required to arrest Kim.com in New Zealand. The FBI requested assistance from the New Zealand government to get their police force to make the arrest. The warrant issued was later declared illegal and invalid by the High Court of New Zealand because it did not make clear what specific crime had been committed, or even that the US was involved. The High Court also found the data seizure in the raid to be unlawful as well. Over 150 terabytes of data was collected and sent directly to the FBI in the United States. The search warrant, however, was executed in New Zealand under New Zealand law, meaning the New Zealand authorities could not legally act as agents for the US and send them evidence. They did it anyways under pressure from the FBI, and Kim was essentially left to deal with them alone to get the data back. Despite these flaws, Kim.com was still fighting being sent to the US, even though there is no mention of copyright infringement in the extradition treaty between the US and New Zealand. Kim's legal team and other legal experts around the world argued that the indictment was layered with unrelated charges and selective interpretations of their business in an attempt to fit the requirements of extradition. The case was manufactured to make Kim and Mega Upload's executives look like evil criminals. The indictment even mentioned Mega Upload as a haven for the most illicit types of content, such as terrorist propaganda videos. Completely unrelated to copyright, and a false statement only included to make it seem evil to people unfamiliar with the business. There was no searching. Somebody could upload a file and then pass out a URL on their own. And they're violating the law if it's copyright material, like a movie. And the person who downloads it is violating a law too. But the, what Kim.com ran is just a service that's like a post office. He was the post office it was being mailed through. Why do you shut down the post office thinking that's where the problem is? In terms of illegal content, including copyrighted content, the website itself had terms and conditions stating that copyrighted content was not allowed to be stored or shared. In addition to this, the website had no search feature. Users could only upload files, not search for them. The only directory the website had was its top 100 list, which concealed copyrighted content, meaning users had to go elsewhere to find download links to movies and TV shows. Mega Upload knew the site was being used for illegal purposes, however, the site was still primarily used for legitimate purposes. And it has been used for the most innocent yeah. purposes, right? I mean, millions of students around the world used us for their, for their education work, you know? Musicians used us to get their mixtapes out. Uh, Small-time movie producers used us to get a name and get known and, and put their stuff out there. You know, we have thousands of examples of people who have used us uh, legitimately, and a significant percentage of our traffic was legitimate uh, traffic. So. The indictment was reaching outside of the prosecutor's scope because the illegitimate content was primarily being shared outside of the US. 90% of Mega Upload's users were outside of the US, and most of the infringing activity came from areas that did not receive US movies, markets that would have no impact on the content industry anyways. And for example, there are other jurisdictions, and this is the funny thing about how this US, the US government is treating this case. In Spain, for example, for a number of years, it was completely legitimate for users to access pirated material online, uh, you know, without any threat uh, of any legal repercussions. So there were a lot of uh, countries, a lot of jurisdictions where that was perfectly legal. Yet the U.S. says, uh, you know, our copyright law in the U.S. has to apply globally, which you know, it's it's kind of funny that they uh, uh, were able to shut us down when only seven percent of all of our traffic on Mega Upload was American. Based, US based. The rest was global. The indictment was also reaching to find nefarious details through selective interpretations of the business model and of the law. Some of the selective interpretations of their business include the prosecutor's view on Mega Upload's premium membership and rewards programs, arguing that they were only used to incentivize illegal activity. Premium memberships granted access to features such as additional storage space and faster download speeds. Members were also eligible for Mega Uploads Rewards Program, which rewards the top downloaders with months of premium membership and small sums of money. Evidence was presented showing rewards payments to users within the United States even though it wasn't related to infringement. 
These payments were used as evidence of promoting criminal copyright infringement because they involved the proceeds of copyright infringement, regardless of the content users downloaded. Despite efforts made like limiting rewards to files smaller than the average movie file and requiring personal information from users, the rewards program was actually removed to avoid any issues, even though they were still removing infringing material. Since Mega Upload received most of its advertising revenue from ads displayed on the download page, encouraging more usage would in turn grow the company and generate more money. This example and many other examples presented in the indictment assume that encouraging more usage means they are encouraging more infringement. With the nature of this new type of business, it's extremely easy to make selective interpretations like this to push a narrative, not only for the US government, but also for Mega Upload. There is, however, still a correct interpretation defined by existing legislation and past cases. The $1 billion lawsuit Viacom filed against YouTube and Google in 2008, for example, is almost identical to Mega Upload's criminal case. Viacom seeked payment for their copyrighted content uploaded to YouTube and argued that YouTube was built on piracy, just like Mega Upload. The ruling for this case, however, stated that YouTube was protected by provisions of the DMCA, and that even though they undeniably had knowledge that copyrighted material had been uploaded, it didn't know which clips had been uploaded with permission and which had not. This case was also civil, not criminal, despite it involving the exact same issues as Mega Upload's case. The case for Mega Upload was designed to shut down the site immediately and send a message to other cloud storage companies trying to run a similar business. Every measure was taken to shut down the company without a hearing and to prevent Kim from being able to defend himself. On top of all the things that could have went wrong in this case, New Zealand was found to have illegally spied on Kim and his colleagues for a month prior to the arrest, intercepting all of their communications. New Zealand's surveillance agency, the GCSB, designed to protect the national security of the country, had spied on its own residents to provide intelligence for the police, leading to the Prime Minister, John Key, publicly apologizing. The extradition process has gone back and forth between appeals, and eight years later, no decision has been made. Something that could have been easily settled in a civil case like Viacom vs YouTube turned into a decade-long process involving a military-style raid, global asset seizure, and illegal spying activity. Cloud storage never went away either, and film companies figured out how to adapt dated business models to new technology. Services like Google Drive, Dropbox, and OneDrive are still around and the industry is bigger than ever. Even though Mega Upload could have remained in that list and despite everything against them, Kim and the Mega Upload team have remained positive. They have continued to fight not only for their freedom, but for the fairness of using new technology for business and preventing the abuse of government powers. It hasn't stopped Kim either, as he continues to develop innovating businesses and continues to enjoy the good life.